Hi, Professor Baldwin here. We've been talking a lot about functions, and today we're going to talk about transformations of functions, or how we can reflect, shift, stretch, and shrink what is called a parent function, or a basic function, or my favorite name for them, a mother function. So, you need to know your mother functions. So you need to know what that most basic function looks like, and then it's going to be so much easier for you to make these transformations. Now, the first transformations we're going to look at, a vertical translation, which is just a shift up or down. And when it's vertical, you're going to see that translation on the outside of the function. So notice we have the function and then we're adding or subtracting this value B. A horizontal translation or a horizontal shift left or right, notice that those happen inside the function. And then we have reflections. When you have a, a negative on the outside of the function, that's reflecting across the x-axis. And when it's inside the function, you're going to reflect across the y-axis. Let's look at some examples. And here we have our mother function x squared. So the mother function is graphed on the right, and we're going to talk about what is happening to each of these functions, the transformations on the left, and I'll show you roughly what they look like. So the first one, we have x squared plus 2. So we're taking our mother function and we're adding 2. The 2 is on the outside, so we're going to go up 2 units that is going to be a vertical shift. So you could take one point, I like to take that vertex, and it'll go up two units. And then we get our new function. Look at number two. Here, our mother function, the negative three is happening inside. Because it's inside, we know we're gonna go right or left. This is actually right three units. So again, if you take that vertex, you can move three units to the right, and you have your new mother function. And lastly, here we have a negative x squared. Notice that this is on the outside. This is not negative x squared. So because that is on the outside, this is a reflection, right? That's what a negative means. But this is a reflection on the x-axis. So the vertex will stay the same, and the graph just reflects. Now, what if you are told what your mother function is, and then you're told some characteristics about how it gets transformed? That's what these next three examples are. So number one, we have the shape of y equals x squared. So that's our mother function. We need to reflect it across the x-axis. So that would make it negative x squared. And then it shifted right eight units. Since it's right, we know that needs to be inside. And to go right, it's negative eight. So our new function, f of x, is going to be negative. Something has to happen inside, and then it gets squared. Inside, we have the minus 8. Example 2. We have y equals the absolute value of x. But we want to shift left 7 units. Remember, left and right are inside, and left would be a plus 7. And then we have up 2 units. That's vertical, so it's outside, and it's a plus 2. So f of x. Inside, we have to go up 7. So that goes inside that absolute value. And outside, we have to add 2. Lastly, number 3 we have the square root function. We need to reflect across the y-axis. So this is going to be inside, 
and that's negative to reflect. We need to shift left two units. Left and right, remember, are horizontal, so that's also inside, and left would be a plus two. And then we need to go down one unit. Up and down, those are vertical. Oops, that should say outside. I tried to write out down. Outside, and that's down, so it's negative one. So our new function, f of x, is going to be a square root, and then we know inside we have a negative. We also need to add two, so that's an x plus two, and then outside we have to subtract one in order to shift it down a unit. Okay, there are more transformations. Besides just moving the mother function left, right, up, down, or reflecting it, we can also stretch it or shrink it. And you can stretch it or shrink it both vertically or horizontally. So again, vertical is going to be on the outside. And horizontal here, that stretch or shrink is on the inside. When it's vertical, your given point is going to change. Since it's on the outside, it changes your y value. And for a horizontal, since that change is happening inside, it changes your x value. Let's look at some examples, and again, with a graph of that mother function, x squared. So here, we have 2x squared. Well, 2 is on the outside. And if it's outside, that means it's vertical. And because it's a value greater than 1, it's going to be a stretch. So vertical means if we take a point 1, 1, which would be this point here, it's going to go to 1, 2, which would be that point moves here. So see how that graph got stretched vertically? It got skinnier. Let's look at number two. Number two, our value is still on the outside, so it's vertical, but one half is less than one, so it's a vertical shrink. So we're going to go from the point one, one again and that goes to 1, 1 half. So that new point is going to be here. And this graph gets shrunk, gets compressed. And example number three, we have a couple things going on. Look at, we have a negative. The negative means we have to reflect. And because it's inside, we're going to reflect across the y-axis. We're not actually going to see much happen with this because it's a parabola. So it's symmetrical, right, on the y-axis. And then also notice we have this 1 fourth. The 1 fourth is on the inside, so that is going to be a horizontal stretch. And a horizontal stretch says that the point 1, 1 goes to the point 4, 1. But that negative would shift it to negative 4, 1. So this point 1, 1 goes to negative 4, 1. And this is what that function would look like. It is horizontally stretched, so it's stretched left to right and made fatter, I guess. Now, what if you don't have a picture? What if you're just given an equation 
and you're told what type of characteristics it has. So we have y equals 1 over x as our mother function, and we're told that it shrunk horizontally. Remember, shrink horizontally is going to be inside and by a factor of 2. So that's going to be 1 over 2. And it shifted down 3. Down is vertical, so that's outside. And down also means negative 3. So f of x is going to equal 1 over 2x minus 3. Okay, what if you're given a point and then you're told what that function is doing? So we're given this point, negative 12, 4. So I'm going to graph that. Negative 12, 4 would be roughly here in quadrant 2. And g of x is now equaling negative f of negative x. That negative is inside. And remember that inside means you reflect across y. So that point is going to come over here. We're just going to fold on the y axis. So that means we're going to go from negative 12 to positive 12. And what happened to the y coordinate? It stays exactly the same as 4. Now let's take the same approach, but with number 2. So again, we're starting at this point, negative 12, 4. And we're told that g of x is equal to f of x minus 2. Minus 2 is on the outside. So that means we're going down 2. So if we go down 2 units, we come down here. So what happened to our x value? It stays the same as negative 12. But what happened to our y value? We went from 4 down 2 to the value 2. I know this is a lot. Transformations, you got to practice them. Sometimes you really need a picture. But you definitely need to know those basic functions, those parent functions, or my favorite, the mother functions. Again, any questions, reach out to me. You can leave it in the comments. You can email me. Whatever's best. I'm here to help.